hello everyone welcome to spectrum classes this is our nmr video and in this video we are going to discuss the factors influencing chemical shift there are three factors majorly which influence the chemical shift value of a proton okay while we are interpreting the 1h nmr spectra then we must consider the following points how to interpret the 1h nmr spectrum by considering all these points we'll define these points in very simple manner so here the first point is electronegativity or we can say inductive effect but there are several exceptions related to this inductive effect since you are very much familiar with the term inductive effect i have written this over here first secondly mesomeric effect or resonance effect the third point is magnetic anisotropy as well as ring curve. So these two terms are considered together, but I have written these two separately. Following points needs to be considered. First is inductive, second bond of walls D shielding. The third point is hydrogen bonding or the solvent effect. Here mesomeric or resonance effect, this will be defined in terms of resonance, in terms of restrictive rotation. This is very important and many times one question has been asked in CSIR. Third point, magnetic anisotropy and ring current. Why I have written these two separately so that I will tell you magnetic anisotropy. So before discuss about the magnetic anisotropy, one must understand what is the meaning of this term anisotropy. Uh, we are having two terms. One is isotropy and the second one is anisotropy isotropy means same in all direction but anisotropy it means different in different direction so what we are going to talk about magnetic anisotropy and this will be discussed in the examples of the molecules which are having double and triple bond but sometimes it is also discussed in terms of single bond for example in the cyclohexane where we are having axial and equatorial bonds different at very low temperature so in single bond also this magnetic anisotropy exists ring current basically have this effect in aromatic compound so we are going to discuss following points in the series of videos because to comprise all the examples all the effects in one video is very difficult it's very lengthy so here in this video we are going to first discuss with the inductive effect or electronegativity electronegativity is exactly more appropriate term but since you are familiar with this we can say we are having inductive effect with few exceptions. So here I will tell you how these effects affect the chemical shift value. We are having the spectrum of NMR. On the right hand side we are having 0 and on the left hand side we are having the 10 and this chemical shift value increases from right to left side. Okay, And here this chemical shift value is represented in delta and its unit is in ppm ppm why because it is independent of the field which is applied we are having more electronegative element attached to the proton or we are having resonance effect and they decreases the electron density around the proton then proton shifted towards down field or at higher delta value so the point which you need to be considered the electron density if you are a beginner then you can much relate yourself with the acidic proton so what is called acidic proton here is the exception of triple bond in nmr spectra so accept that so that is why this is our main point and this is just for your understanding since triple bond is having more acidic hydrogen but that is resonate at low value so please don't get confused i will discuss that also but since if you are a beginner then you can understand what is acidic H. so this is just for your understanding how this acidic H comes into picture so if we remove the electron density this H becomes H positive so as the H becomes H positive or we are having less electron density it resonates at downfield side rather than this side now I will show you this with the help of examples so here are the elements and these elements are written or arranged in this table in their decreasing electron negativity and this electronegativity is the falling scale. Now we are having the compounds which are having these electronegative elements. Here is CH3F H which is written in red in this table. So here we are having CH3F. So what this F will do here uh, for this molecule i'll just explain you how this works 
Okay, so this is my molecule. Here we are having H, H, and H. Why this F is more electronegative? So it will what it will try? It will try to pull the electrons toward its side. If it pull the electrons towards its side, it means it has partial negative charge and it has this carbon has partial positive charge. And just because of this partial positive charge, it will try to pull the electrons from these protons, okay? In this manner. So the electron density or the electrons which are present in this bond, they will shift it slightly towards this carbon atom. So more is the electronegativity, more is the shifting of the electrons. Electron density around these protons is decreased. If electron density around these protons decrease, they will resonate at higher delta value. Okay? If this is my delta PPM. Similarly, if we are having this molecule, okay, so here is this. This is the electron negative element, okay. So this will try to pull the electrons. Similarly, this will get negative charge and this will get partial positive charge. And due to this partial positive charge, it will try to pull the electrons towards its side. The electron density around these protons decreases and they will resonate at higher delta value. If we compare this with this ethane molecule, so here is the ethane molecule. Electronegative element is not there. So what we will do here, these all six protons are same. They will resonate same frequency. They will give one signal and they resonate at 0 0.9 delta value. So if we compare the electronegative element, here this CS3 resonates at 0 0.9 and if electronegative elements are attached with proton or this methyl group then they resonate at higher delta value. Now I will show you some more examples in the same series. So here is the fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. As we move down the group, electronegativity decreases as you know. So as the electronegativity decreases, I'll just write here, fluorine is having more electronegative, chlorine, bromine and then iodine. Since the electronegativity of fluorine is highest, so it will resonate or it deshields the proton more and it resonates at higher delta value. These are the delta values in PP. The next example is CH3OH, this is oxygen, this is nitrogen uh, and this is CR3. Okay carbon carbon and this is silicon. These are the elements which are having their own electronegative stable. Oxygen is having more electronegativity as compared to nitrogen. So the protons of this methyl resonates at higher delta ppm value. We are not talking about this proton. Okay. That we will discuss in the hydrogen bonding and here this resonates at this value and since nitrogen is having 3.1 and what about this carbon? Carbon is having 2.5. The third example, if we are having same type of substituent group, but the number of substituents are different. So here one chlorine, two chlorine atoms, three chlorine atoms. So as the number of electronegative elements increases, here it is one, here it is two, and here it is three. So as the number of electronegative elements increases, the delta value increases due to higher electronegative effect. Next is as we are moving away from the electronegative element, these are H. So 1 and this is 2. So we are we are now at 2 bond distance. If we are just drawing this, so here it is CHCl and this is CH3. So 1, 2 and 3 bond distance. Okay. So here the distance is 2 bonds, 3 bonds and here it is 4 bonds. If you just see this, C, C, L, C and C. Right? So here is my H. So 1 bond, 2 bond, 3 bond, 4 bond. So as you know, the inductive effect diminish as we are moving away from the electronegative element. So more than three bonds, it is almost negligible.
so as you see here we are having 0.9 and again here we are having 0.9 so no effect of chlorine atom on this proton so here i again explain atom or group attached to the methyl group decreases electron density around the proton as a result proton resonate at higher delta value i hope you understand this sentence complete now the question comes or you may have question how and why this electron negative effect work so that i already explained in one of my video in detail but just i'll summarize over here again suppose this is the proton and this proton is surrounded by the electron since no bare proton is available this is the applied external magnetic field so here uh, if we see this situation in this pictorial form so this is the applied external magnetic field this field should be experienced by this proton but due to the presence of surrounding electrons it experience only effective magnetic field what about this b induced this is the induced magnetic field which is induced by the surrounding electron and it is in the opposite direction if we subtract the induced magnetic field from the applied external magnetic field then this proton experience only effective magnetic field that is b effective any of the nuclei will experience lesser magnetic field it will process with lesser frequency if it presses with lesser frequency here are the relations delta is equal to h nu so here if nuclei will experience lesser magnetic field so its frequency is also less and if its frequency is less then what we will see here in this image constant applied magnetic field a nuclei will experience less magnetic field okay and it resonate with low frequency so low frequency is up field side and somehow able to remove the electron density to certain extent it means we are increasing this b effective we induce this lesser b effective increases and if b effective increases it means frequency increases if frequency increases so we will come at this side higher delta value or higher frequency for more details uh, you can go through that video okay the link i will provide in the description box and uh, this is our another example here you see ch3 group shows the plus i effect okay and this plus i effect is just because of hyperconjugation here tertiary carbon resonates at higher delta value we are not considering the hyperconjugation over here then secondary carbon then the primary carbon For primary secondary and tertiary carbons you know very well uh, if this is the carbon which is attached with three carbons this tertiary and if we are having this type of carbon this is secondary and this is primary which is attached with the one carbon okay so in this is how one can understand the primary secondary and tertiary carbon so the picture in your mind is that it is having more plus i effect so that is why i told you electronegativity is an appropriate term as compared to the inductive effect for carbon we are having 2.55 and for proton we are having 2.2 okay so these are the electronegativity values for carbon and proton so carbon is having more electronegativity value than the protons that is why it resonates at higher delta and this may be the explanation if we uh, consider this effect in other example here is the example here we are having ch3 cl r ch2 cl r2 ch cl so these are the values so here we are having ch3 cl which resonates at lower delta value and r ch2 cl it resonates at higher and r2 ch cl it resonates even at higher delta value so i hope you understand this concept and this is important if you consider only the inductive effect you definitely made this mistake the next point is if we are having charges in the molecule so plus charge will uh, have electron deficiency so it will try to pull the electrons towards its side so if molecule is having plus charge then where it will go get resonance it will resonates at lower field value or at higher frequency value 
if the molecule is having negative charge as in case of carbon ion so it is having high electron density so it gives the electron density towards the proton so if we are having carbon ion then it is up filled okay it is down filled and this is up filled the next is here i have given one example with the values so here is the c double bond o and this is the ch2 uh, ch2 ch3 and this side we are having ch3 so how you are going to interpret this is important uh, examples which we have discussed already in this video and uh, try to apply those concepts here in this example so first what you have to consider here we are having the c double bond o o is the electronegative atom what it will do it will try to pull the electrons towards its side so which will resonate at lower delta value this one red is resonates at lower delta value or up filled side c double bond o resonates at this side means it is secondary carbon this will resonates at lower delta value green at 2.41 if we are talking about the ch2 and ch3 so as we are moving away from the electronegative element the minus i effect diminish 1.6 value and if we move further so this is ch3 this is primary so it resonates at 0.9 so this is how one can interpret the nmr spectrum considering the points which we have discussed here in this video now this is the example try to identify on the basis of this so you can easily identify suppose a is on this side b is at middle and c is at downfield side so you try to mark them so how you are going to mark these first you try to identify the electronegative element then you go the neighboring carbon atoms so here the neighboring atoms are hydrogen and uh, sorry red and green hydrogen so which will resonate at up filled side and which will resonate at down filled side so this green will resonate at down filled side so i will mark this as this as a because this is not directly relate to this oxygen okay so this is at higher side if we are talking about these two which will go this will be b and this will be c i probably mark these right so these are the this is how you are going to interpret the next is this molecule so first you have to identify the number of peaks on different type of protons so here i mark these two are of same type these are in blue this is in green this is in red okay so first try to identify the electronegative element this is for beginners actually these are very simple examples so this is our oxygen so oxygen is directly relates to this carbon and carbon first this we will mark a to this blue then we will go for b b will be on this so this is our uh, two degree carbon okay and this will be our c probably mark so these are the answers and this is how you are going to interpret the nmr spectrum this is very important video in the next video we are going to discuss the wonder wall e shielding and hydrogen bonding okay so i hope you understand the concept and you find this video informative if you really likes this video please subscribe my channel and give me a thumbs up thank you all